Let's say you're interested in studying the evolution of a complex feature, like eyes. Eyes can't evolve from a single mutation. It takes multiple steps occurring in the right order in order for that particular complex feature to evolve. So how do you study the order that those steps occurred in? You can look at the fossil record, but some fossils are missing from the fossil record. So like, what do you do? Well, I mean, until somebody invents a time machine, basically you're not gonna be able to tell which order certain steps occurred in. Well, you couldn't tell until now. So to study the evolution of eyes, you actually do need a time machine. But to study the evolution of complex features, which steps occurred in which order, well, scientists have figured out a way to study that using computer programs. Computer programs aren't alive, of course, but they can behave like living organisms in some ways. Consider computer viruses. They're little computer scripts that can copy their own code into the memory of your computer. If they copy themselves over and over again, they're kind of like replicating organisms, like viruses or bacteria. What scientists realized is that if they take this kind of self-replicating computer script and built in the ability for it to change its code when it replicates, kind of like mutation, then the computer scripts could evolve. See, natural selection happens when three things are true. Organisms reproduce by making genetically similar copies of themselves. There's genetic variation between the offspring because mutations cause imperfect copying. And some genetic variants are better than others at surviving and reproducing. So the scientists thought, if we intentionally build a self-replicating computer script that mutates, we could use it to study evolution. Because if there are multiple computer scripts competing for the same space in computer memory, then the scripts that copy themselves fastest will fill up computer memory faster and even be able to overwrite other scripts. And since they're constantly making changes to the computer script when they copy themselves, a new variant might arise by accident that can copy itself even faster, and that new variant would eventually take over. That's natural selection! And even though it's not happening in living organisms, it's not a simulation, because you can't predict what the most efficient, the most competitive computer script is gonna look like. The only way to find out is to let them duke it out on a computer through reproduction, variation, and survival of the fittest. So it's probably not a good idea to let self-replicating mutating computer scripts take over your computer. So the scientists who wanted to study this, they developed a program called Avita. And in Avita, the computer scripts can self-replicate and evolve, but they can't escape and take over the computer. And real scientists do real scientific experiments using Avita to answer questions like, what is the evolutionary origin of complex features? So what we've talked about so far in terms of computer scripts competing with each other by copying themselves faster, it's not really a complex feature because one small mutation could make the computer script copy itself a little bit faster. Whereas a complex feature requires many, 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 many changes to happen before that feature even arises. So to study the evolution of complex features in computer programs, the scientists use something called Boolean functions. Here's how it works. Each self-replicating computer script in Avita, we call it an Avidian, is a computer script made up of individual mini-scripts called operations. Each Avidian executes its operations from beginning to end in a loop. There are 26 possible operations in the world of Avita. Each time an Avidian copies itself, it randomly swaps one or more operations with another one, just like a DNA sequence mutating. Some of the operations have to do with replication, but some of the operations have to do with random strings of bits. See, each Avidian receives strings of bits as input, and different operations manipulate the bits differently by doing things like shifting all the bits one to the right, adding them together, and so on. Now, if certain operations are put together in the right order, they will perform a Boolean function. Boolean functions are logic tests that compare two binary strings and the result of the test is stored as a new binary string. In Boolean logic, one is true and zero is false. For example, the Boolean function AND tests if the value is true, or one, for one of the bits AND true for the other one as well. If the first bit AND the second bit are both true, then it outputs true, or one. But if either one of the bits is false, or zero, it returns a value of false, or zero and it does this for every bit in the string. There are other Boolean functions that result in different output strings, like not, or, and equals, to name a few. 
So in Avita, Boolean functions are complex features because none of the operations, the pieces that make up the script of the Avidian, none of those operations can perform a Boolean function on its own. So in order for the Avidian to perform a Boolean function, it has to have its operations in just the right order. And some Boolean functions require a lot of operations to happen in just the right order, kind of like it takes a lot of specific steps to evolve an eye. Now, Boolean functions will arise randomly in a population of Avidians. But in order for Boolean functions to become a dominant feature in a population, they have to be advantageous somehow. There has to be a reward for performing a Boolean function, right? Survival of the fittest. And the way the scientists built in that reward is to give Avidians that can perform a Boolean function more access to the computer CPU so they can copy themselves faster. And faster replicating computer scripts will outcompete other ones. In Avita, you can actually decide which functions to reward with CPU time or not. The scientists name them resources and put an os on the end of each function name, like it's a sugar that the Avidians can eat. Now, if I wanted a computer script that could do a Boolean function, I'd probably just write one. But what's so cool about Avita is that nobody's writing these computer scripts. They're just copying themselves and randomly swapping out some operations for other, randomly. And if they can perform a Boolean function, then they get more CPU time, so they outcompete the other computer scripts that are in the program. It's natural selection, just in your computer. And what's cool is that unlike the fossil record, you can actually go back and look step by step at which mutations occurred for a particular Boolean function to arise. So the most complex Boolean function in Avita is equals. And when the scientists studied the evolution of equals in Avita, what they found is that the function equals can arise in multiple ways from different combinations of operations. And while many of the mutations along the way were beneficial and made the Avidians more competitive, some of the mutations were not, but they persisted long enough for another mutation to occur that, in combination with the earlier mutations, gave the Avidian the ability to do the function equals. Knowing how that process happens step-by-step step in digital organisms and these computer scripts can help us understand how that process happens in real living organisms out in the world. Avita lets scientists study really interesting evolution questions, but the original Avita program is pretty complicated to use, like you have to know how to code to use it. So the scientists developed Avita Ed, which is a freely available browser-based app using the original Avita code that anyone can use to do experiments. There are so many interesting evolution questions you can ask using Avita Ed on your own computer. So go check it out. I've put a link to Avita Ed in the description. And when you discover something really interesting, let me know in the comments and hit the subscribe button so you can find out about other cool topics and techniques in biology. Thanks.